please join us in welcoming to the stage Doug Kusick, CEO of Transformative Med. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm standing between you and the celebration. Is that the case? So I've got like 10 minutes to impress you and convince you that healthcare is a phenomenal industry to invest in and deep complicate it. Um, I am Doug Cusick, the CEO of Transformative Med, and I was pleased to hear some of the earlier speakers use the word transformative a couple times because it speaks to what we do. We're actually transforming uh, healthcare in even a small way, but making a big difference. Um, for all of you out there who are doctors, uh, those of you who know doctors, all of us access doctors, one of the challenges you find in the industry is that um, regardless of where you practice medicine, one of the things you typically hear is that, God, we hate using the electronic record. It really ties us down in terms of being able to deliver care to our patient, and often you'll see it. So we're here to transform, and we're pretty excited about what we've been able to do so far. So let me introduce uh, one Medical of the Medical care has gotten a lot shoot. more complex. Part Can I get back real quick? Let me introduce one of those frustrated docs who's a trauma surgeon, humble trauma surgeon at the University of Washington, who can tell you a little bit about the problem and the solutions that we bring to market. Medical care has gotten a lot more complex, particularly care of hospitalized patients. The days are gone when a single doctor like Marcus Welby was in charge of a patient's entire hospital course. Today, if you're a clinician in the hospital, you're part of a team of clinicians. And helping your team are more teams of specialists, therapists, consultants, social workers, and so forth. Each person on a team manages a list of patients as they move about the hospital doing their work. And so each team member needs a way to quickly organize that list of patients, review the information that's pertinent to their own expertise, and create a portable version of that list to use as they make rounds and take care of patients. Their use of the list needs to be connected seamlessly to their clinical documentation. And at the end of their shift, they use that same list to hand off care to colleagues or cross-covering clinicians. Hospitals invested billions in electronic health record systems to help manage patient information, and they work great for storing patient data, but these systems fail to organize information in the particular ways these teams need it for effective clinical communication and team collaboration. This leaves gaps that affect quality and efficiency, and it leaves clinicians needlessly frustrated. Major electronic health record systems aren't designed to fit the unique workflows for the hundreds of different types of clinical teams in a hospital. But that's okay, because CORS is. It's designed to pick up where the electronic health record stops. It makes the electronic health record work like teams do, by organizing all the information that a team member needs, sharing updates in real time, and putting it at everyone's fingertips. And it does all of this out of the box, already tailored to most teams, and is quickly customizable for any other member of your team. We've spent years researching and improving cores. We gathered knowledge from clinicians about how they want patient information organized, and we combined it with our clinically proven best-in-class handoff processes, creating the comprehensive tools required for clinical communication and collaboration. Then we embedded this solution inside the electronic health record system that hospitals already own, so there's no need to change systems or build interfaces. Just use cores. It works the way you do. <laughs> um, just a little bit about Eric. He's an interesting character. He did this in one take, and uh, it's a shame that one guy has so much talent. But we love him. So Eric, Eric spoke to a little bit our core value suite, which is really a set of bundled solutions that are, in great, uh, that are integrated and embedded in the electronic health record. Very broad and very deep. We essentially occupy two very, very broad spaces. One called, as Eric mentioned, clinical communication and collaboration. And it's really about bringing care teams together inside the hospital to collaborate around the best care to deliver to the patients. And not like the old days when it was one doc, as Eric said, but the care teams that function around you. The second space is what we call augmented care intelligence. It's really about bringing disease, uh, very specific clinical decision support based on diseases. And these are very, very big spaces that occupy uh, a huge segment of the healthcare market. Clinical communication, as I mentioned, one of the biggest products that we bring to market today is CORS. Uh, Dr. Van Eaton spoke to CORS. These are the various modules that support the CORS product. We've got three other products that we're selling today that we're going live with over the next three months. 
Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, we closed a nice deal today that I'll mention here uh, shortly. The second space that I mention is augmented care intelligence. The first big product that we um, brought to market is called Glycema Care. It's around insulin inpatient management, and there are four other products now that we're bringing uh, general availability over the next few months and beginning to sell and close contracts. If you didn't know, uh, in the U.S. alone, it's a, it's, a, it's a $10 billion industry on a yearly basis. It's phenomenal amounts of money that providers spend to purchase the electronic health record and to support it from a, uh, a services perspective. The two predominant players are Cerner and Epic, and they eat up about 50% of the U.S. market and growing, and they're consuming more and more of the international footprint. We've spent the last few years very focused on Cerner. We have about 10% of the Cerner beds in the United States today, and we're moving aggressively internationally, and we're moving to Epic. If you know anything about healthcare, Epic is uh, you know, one of those big players, and moving to Epic is going to be very important. Hospitals really have a choice, quite honestly. They can go with Cerner, they can go with Epic. Regardless, a 2,000-bed system would spend roughly a half a billion dollars just to purchase the software and roughly a hundred million dollars a year to support it. These are really, really big numbers, and I think unless you're in the industry, they're shockingly high. If they don't like a particular vendor, the choice is pretty limited. They can rip and replace and go to another vendor, but it's still another 500 million dollars and another hundred million on a yearly basis to support it. We really bring that, that layer of usability that doesn't matter what vendor they use, use transformative med to bring in the types of workflows that they actually need to perform their jobs. So instead of ripping, replacing, or waiting for the vendors to deliver very slowly, invest in transformative med, which is what you'll see from our clients. It's much faster, it's easier, and it's inexpensive, and this is really where the true value is delivered uh, and the promise of the electronic health record. So our solutions are easily adopted, right? Clinicians love it. We implement quickly. Uh, there are zero trainers on site. These are some of anomalies for a guy like me who's been in this industry a long time that I've never seen. So it, it's, it's pretty exciting that we're able to deliver value so effectively. And as I mentioned, we're just a small, very small part of the spend, but delivering significant value based on their overall spend. And this is the proof. Today we have about 130 health system clients uh, across the United States. Uh, and the exciting thing about this is these are all three-year recurring deals. And we're renewing contracts today at about 3 to 5x, which is kind of surprising. So it tells me, number one, we're sticky. And number two, we're delivering incredible value. They don't even question when I've been elevating the price. So it's a real big lever as we're um, moving north in the revenue. Best thing about this, though, is that we continue to land and expand in our existing clients. So in terms of our competitive advantage, we're integrated in the electronic health record, as I said. So in Cerner, moving to Epic, and we're a heck of a lot more innovative than the vendors themselves and any of the single entry vendors that are in the marketplace today. We innovate, we innovate quickly and we deliver fast and we implement quickly and get the adoption that these organizations need from their clinicians, their doctors and nurses, et cetera. So our, our go-to-market is very simple. To date, it's been mostly inbound, so referrals, conferences, et cetera. Uh, we're moving to a very externalized uh, 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 go-to-market approach, so continuing to consume uh, Cerner, uh, Cerner clients. Um, also moving into new markets, as I mentioned, Epic. Uh, Cerner owns public sector U.S., so the Department of Defense, as well as um, uh, the VA and then uh, moving internationally. I spent a decade overseas running IBM's health and life science business, so moving into that business is going to be um, quite exciting. And then, of course, adding additional products to consume both of those spaces that I mentioned. And the TAM is phenomenal, right? We know that the marketplace exists. We know that they're desperate for our type of solutions, so it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting for us to expand quite dramatically. A little bit about our revenue. There are really two metrics that matter to us. 
Number one, how many beds we contract. And today we contract 100% of the beds in every health system that we contract with. And number two, the revenue per bed. So in 2017, we had roughly $1 million in recurring revenue, and we're a software as a service business. Um, and we were roughly at about $35 per bed per revenue. In 2018, we'll essentially double, we'll hit targets of about 2.2 million in revenue and move the, uh, the revenue per bed up to about $86 per bed. The interesting thing, back to my earlier comment that I mentioned about today's client, one product, we're ready to sign the deal with them at $383 per bed. It's shocking to me because I've been in the industry this long, but they're so desperate to get the value delivered from the electronic health record that these prices are, are, are extremely low from what they're uh, used to making. So by 2022, we're aiming for about a $75 million clip, which again is a really, really small proportion of what they're spending today. I've got a great season team, right? These guys are experienced, they're collaborative, they know how to build, they know how to implement, they know how to sell. And that's the best team that one could ask for. Um, and even um, more so than uh, the team, I've got a great board of advisors who are really invested in our business. So they give us great advice. They tell us when we pull levers, when we push levers, all of the things that you want from your advisors. So in closing, I've been in this industry for 30 years, you can tell by the gray hair. Um, and I've seen it change over 30 years. And I've led and built big businesses uh, from, with IBM overseas, with HP in the United States. I've done startups, I've done growth companies. I've never been more passionate about a company in my life and our ability to truly change how healthcare is delivered, not only in the United States and abroad. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Doug. And Eric, do you want to start us off? Yeah, maybe dive right in. So um, uh, I, 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 if I understand the, the vision correctly, it's with the move toward coordinated care, you guys are taking the, the data that's being stored in the legacy systems and being able to repackage it up to better serve the workflows that, that the companies need or that the healthcare workers need. Is that kind of a right answer? It is. So okay. we're actually embedded in yeah. the electronic health record. We organize the data based on the doctor, the specialty, mm -hmm. how they want to practice medicine. Instead of forcing them to do something that's not intuitive, organize the data based on that, the type of specialist they are, how they round uh, within their own care teams, when they need very specific data to make decisions. Because basically the EHR is just a massive repository of data. The, the, the key is organizing it and, and presenting it in a way that they can use it and make decisions. Okay. And being embedded in the electronic me medical record means that we're actually in the workflow and how they, how they communicate and, and cool. interact with the record itself. And, and so maybe digging into the, the financials a little bit. So sure. it look, and maybe I'm confused, but the company's been around for a little while, right? Uh, we were spent out in 2011 okay. at the University of Washington. So can I unpack a little bit for us uh, in terms of, it sounds like, You've, you've got some, some revenue, um, but for, for uh, I guess, six, seven years, kind of at that million dollar mark last sure. year, two million this year, what's kind of the catalyst now that is gonna kind of create that inflection point where we'll see the hockey stick? That's a great question. The market has opened. In the last couple of years, um, provider organizations have realized that their vendors are not gonna deliver as fast as they need solutions that make the record usable. So in the last couple of years, our revenue is starting to bump up considerably. Um, the one thing that I didn't uh, mention to me is the ramp going into 2019, right? It's a considerable ramp to go from 2.2 million to 9.9. .9. Well, the fact is, is the quality of the pipeline is now ramping up to get us to where we need in 2019 because the market is finally accepting that they're not gonna get everything they need from their one core vendor. And it's not just Cerner, it's also Epic and it's other vendors across the system. So the market's finally opening up. We might have been a little too early in the, in the initial part, but now we're hitting, uh, we're hitting on, on all gears and strides. So to, to follow up on that a little bit, um, sure. uh, who do you actually sell into in, in the, in the you know, hospital and how do you get the doctors up to speed to use the system? Yeah, it's so um, two answers. So number one, the executive suite. 
we're selling um, very strategically to the executives who own the budget, right? It's moving from a discretionary spend, hey, we'd like to have this, to us solving very critical problems, earning a seat at the executive table, solving those problems, and then expanding more across what they, where they spend their money. So always the executive suite, but we also need that groundswell from the clinicians, the doctors who are actually using it. So we take a multi-pronged approach because many of us are clinicians. I'm a clinician myself. So making sure we get the physicians and doctors and nurses and others on board, at the same time we're selling to the executives, CIO, CMIO, CEO, all of the C-suite. Kind of just following up on that, the, um, it sounds like you know a classic enterprise sale, right? Selling at the enterprise sure suite. Um, if I'm doing the math right, the million divided by 130 hospitals is about 8K per customer. And so I'm thinking about the, the ACV and the sales cost to do it. They seem a little bit, uh, how are you going to close that gap? Because it sounds so, like you're going to need to drive a lot more revenue per customer in order to... All right, so two support. ways. So number one, increasing the amount of products we bring into the solutions, increasing the price. Right, as, as I said, we're renewing contracts at dramatic multiples that I've never seen, which tells me that they're sticky. And I don't believe we've hit top yet, quite honestly, in terms of the pricing. Number two, we're closing the large enterprise deals. So with some of the clients you see, we may have one or two of their facilities and then bumping that up to the strategic level, like Ascension, for instance, right? Consuming all 114 hospitals, so getting those really strategic deals. And I'm a big elephant hunter. The sales VP we just brought on board, we're big elephant hunters because we know we can produce the revenue. What, what, I understand that you're a lot more nimble because your size, you know, but if you think about Epic and Cerner being, already having established relationships, um, what's keeping them potentially from coming into the marketplace and offering, you know, what you're offering today? So good question. So as I mentioned, they innovate very slowly and they deliver very slowly, right? Um, it's, it's, um, it's certainly accepted in the marketplace. Um, the fact is we've been building content and workflows special uh, to, to um, what the physicians and the clinicians need for the last decade. So Cerner clients have been coming to us, for example, to say, look, we've tried it. It's not working. We're going to keep Cerner, but we really need to get the value of the electronic health records. So they come to us. And, and that's, they're not going to compete in that way because they've got bigger fish to fry, uh, quite honestly. The challenge with Epic is that it's a closed model. But Epic clients are now saying, look, we're also facing challenges with Epic. And we need to innovate faster and Epic's not delivering. So how can we bring solutions that are embedded in Epic and in the workflow that really deliver to the value that Epic initially promised? So the Epic market will also be forced to open. So five, five years from now, you're growing, tripling revenue, growing tremendously. Who's going to buy you other than Cerner or Epic? How, how do you get others interested? So if you think about, um, if you think about, if you think about organizations, and I love to use Ascension, they have both Epic and Cerner across 114 facilities. One of their biggest challenges is reducing the variability of care. So wherever you go in their system, their docs are providing the same quality of care regardless of where they are. That's challenging to do when you're using two distinct electronic health records. Put transformative med as the skin, no matter where you go, you're using the same workflows in the same hospitals. And if you think about just the sheer amount of data that we consume and the fact that it's correct data, right? So like artificial intelligence, machine learning, garbage in, garbage out. This is good data that they can, we can actually use to produce outcome. So some of the bigger vendors like IBM Watson, right? Amazon 1492, content companies like Walters Kluwer. The sky's the world, quite honestly, in healthcare. All right, cool. Thanks, Doug. Let's see if yep, uh, anyone sure. in the audience has questions. We have some hands up right here, please. Hey. Dave Young and Tob, Willamette Valley Capital. So I think it, it's a kind of an axiom that when the hospitals use your system, that results in better outcomes for the patients. But what are some of the downstream outcomes for the hospitals? Are they making more money? Do they have less you know, malpractice suits, less hospital-acquired infections? Like, what are the benefits to the hospital? So firstly, um, for their clinicians, increased productivity and efficiency. If you slow a doctor down in his or her process, by having to spend too much time interacting with the computer to get information, they see less patients, right? 
Believe it or not, um, doctors aren't too happy with using the EHR, so making sure clinicians are satisfied is hugely important today, especially as healthcare systems compete. From a, um, from a cost perspective, uh, part of the challenge in healthcare that we all know is billing, right? So organizations need to pull in a lot of money and make sure that they're billing insurance companies correctly. And a lot of that responsibility falls on the doctor's shoulders, and there's an army of people downwind that try to fix it all. So if you think about just the sheer amount of resources required to get billing right, the more you can affect it up front as far as the process, then the more revenue predictability these organizations have. So for me, right, all of these things moving up to the critical world comes down to producing revenue for the organization, right, hugely important. And number two, making sure their clinicians are actually practicing medicine and not having to be tied to a computer. Do you have some preliminary data or results on how you've been able to measure those improvements? Absolutely. In time efficiencies, we have a number of published uh, studies that have come out of some of our organization in terms of time save, for instance, right, and how that rolls back into seeing more patients. Yeah. Okay. So just quantifiable already. Absolutely. Super. Other questions? Let's go right here with the blue cube, and then we'll... Hi, yeah. um, I'm Laura Haddock. Uh, this sounds like a great communication tool um, for everyone along the ladder, especially if you're going to incorporate messaging. Uh, in 2019, for everyone from nurse assistants to dietitians, surgeons, all the way over to uh, mental health experts. So how, who can use this besides physicians? Uh, and how are you going to address patient privacy and HIPAA? So remember, these are in the, these are in the four walls of the hospital, right? So this is a B2B play. And in terms of messaging today, you asked, so the, the vendors that are in the marketplace today are very single, right? They sit outside of the workflow. So when a doctor or nurse gets a message, typically it, it's not, um, it, it doesn't fit into their entire patient list because we manage our own list, right? So they get the message and then they somehow have to react to it. And it's not in the workflow and oftentimes it's part of another system. So the second generation products that, we were, that we're embedded into the solutions, right? A doctor can say, look, I need a lab value based on something I need to know about you. And when I get that, I need to react to it, which means I need to place an order, right? I need to hand it off to someone. The more it's part of the intuitive way that I do business as a doctor or as a nurse, right? Then the more efficient I am and the more reactive I can be to make sure I'm delivering proper care to you. Our clients are getting really excited about now bringing these second generation products because we're embedded in the workflow and um, it, it makes a big difference in terms of some of the ROI I've just said. Right, thanks. Does that answer your question? Good. Right here with the orange cube, please. Uh, hey, my name is Hussein. Um, so you're trying to compete with like Epic and CERN and um, I know that your platform is like um, more up, getting more updated and improved over those, but how do you feel about um, hospitals and like doctors who are already used to the, those systems to change to your systems? I, I'm sorry, I missed the last part of that question. I'm, I'm not, my hearing is going. I think you can tell the gray hair. Maybe you, you could repeat like how, the last part. How again. can like hospitals change from those you're competing to your like projects? So we, we're, we, we would never want a hospital to rip and replace their system. They need the data repositories, right? They need these electronic health records. The challenge is they've not been extremely well used or usable because they're not intuitive to how clinicians practice medicine. Right? For us, we bring our solutions in that actually make the electronic health record usable for the clinicians who need it. And, and it's, it's as easy as that. Thank you. All right, one last quick burning question, if any. Okay, well, this is, this is fantastic. It has the opportunity to really improve the quality of care. What's that? You got it. a gator, please. <laughs> Aren't you going to get me off the stage? So your metrics are all based around beds. Yep. But does this work in just clinics and doctor's offices and everywhere else too? We're solely focused on the inpatient today, so the okay. four walls of the hospital, because quite honestly, there's a lot of cash there and there's very little competition. Oh, great. Well, that's good. Same <laughs> focus. Same focus for now. And uh, it, it really does seem to have the opportunity to improve the, the quality of care for patients. And reminds me, when I, when I was a kid, I used to play doctor, and I'm sure some of you did too. And when I played doctor, that meant... I would keep my friends waiting for three hours. 
So this, this is going to make improvements. So let's give a big hand to Doug. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for presenting. Thank you.